please click on subscribe button. Press the bell icon so you never miss any video. Hello friends how are you? My name is Robert. This video made by me. I see a video free energy magnetic motor on YouTube channel name engineering projects so I decide to make a video about magnetic motor and send to engineering projects channel for this good work. I thankful to engineering projects for helping me a lot. So let's start this video. Our topic is how to build a free energy magnetic motor. Many have tried building a free energy producing magnetic motor. I am seeing a lot of in my daily quest through alternative energy news, but what I have learned is that energy is not free, perpetual motion machines do not exist, everything is taken from somewhere and put elsewhere. Free energy from magnets respects the same rule. There also is the so-called free energy, the zero-point energy, proven mathematically by many scientists. My duty as engineering projects is to collect everything I see someone has struggled explaining and demonstrating, put it in one place and let the people see and comment. Such is the example of this magnetic motor. But there are also engineering projects channel. When they see something out of common sense boundaries, they freak out and scream something like OMG, this can't be real. I need no proof. I must not think of this, I made this video today as an inspiration because it talks about the magnetic motor, one of my favorite free energy topics, about which I haven't heard much lately. Here is the whole process of transforming the free magnetic energy into mechanical energy, explained by the inventions author engineering projects channel. Think of two powerful magnets. One fixed plate over rotating disc with north side parallel to disc surface, and other on the rotating plate connected to small gear G1. If the magnet over gear G1's north side is parallel to that of which is over rotating disc then they both will repel each other. Now the magnet over the left disc will try to rotate the disc below in clockwise direction. Now there is another magnet at 30 angular distance on rotating disc on both side of the magnet M1. Now the large gear G0 is connected directly to rotating disc with the rod. So after repulsion if rotating disc rotates it will rotate the gear G0 which is connected to gear G1. So the magnet over G1 rotate in the direction perpendicular to that of fixed disc surface. Now the angle and teeth ratio of G0 and G1 is such that when the magnet M1 moves 30 degree, the other magnet which came in the position where M1 was, it will be repelled by the magnet of fixed disc as the magnet on fixed disc has moved 360 degrees on the plate above gear G1. So if the first repulsion of magnets M1 and M0 is powerful enough to make rotating disc rotate 30 degrees or more the disc would rotate till error occurs in position of disc, friction loss or magnetic energy loss. The space between two discs is just more than the width of magnets M0 and M1 and space needed for connecting gear G0 to rotating disc with the rod. Now I have not tested with actual objects. When designing you may think of losses or may think that when rotating disc rotates 30 degrees and magnet M0 will be rotating clockwise on the plate over G2 then it may start to repel M1 after it has rotated about 25 degrees. The solution is to use more powerful magnets. If all the objects are made precisely with measurements given and the rectangular cubic magnets are powerful enough to rotate more than 30 degrees in first repulsion then the system will work. Here friction and other losses are neglected as magnets are much more powerful. But think of friction between rotating disc and shaft, it can be neglected by using magnetic joint between them. On the left primary measurements of needed objects are given. If you find any reason of not running this mechanism let me know, what do you think? Could it work?
Please like, comment, share and press the subscribe button for more videos. Thank you.